Hi, I'm Abhishek, uh, and uh, here are my co-speakers, Shama and Saghun. Today, we are going to talk about a uh, large language model fine-tuning and inferencing using Onyx Runtime. So let's get started. So the agenda for today would be we're starting with some code execution. We wanted to show you a live demo, the code which we are running, so that by the time I complete, uh, we complete our presentation, the code has completed, and we want to show you the results of that one. Uh, the crux of the presentation would uh, would would like to address a scenario of training a large language model using the existing technologies and environment uh, so that you can easily take any large language model and use uh, and improve the training and inferencing time of the model. So the technologies which we are going to use would be Onyx Runtime, which helps you in improving your training as well as inference time. We are also going to use DeepSpeed LoRa for uh, uh, for the model training and um, the environment which we, which we are going to use is going to be Azure Container for PyTorch and uh, the large language model which we are using today would be the Mistral 7 billion model and uh, everything put together would be uh, run, running on Azure ML and um, th that will be the uh, all the technologies which we will be using today. And uh, then after introducing all the technologies, I'm going to talk about, uh, I'll go th through the code and uh, walk you through the steps which we have uh, added and which you can use it for your use case so that you can improve your uh, training as well as inference time. And finally, we'll do some performance com comparison uh, compared to PyTorch. Uh, we'll do some uh, performance comparison and we'll summarize uh, these, uh, whatever we did today. And finally, uh, we'll do some UI walkthrough so that you can use some existing large language model to train your use case scenario. So let's get started. Uh, just wanted to point it out. If there are any questions, feel free to interrupt me at any time. Uh, okay, so let's starting with the ORT. Like I'm uh, starting to scripts. First would be to training and on a training Mistral model. And the second would be running an inference benchmark script. So here, what I am doing is I am just submitting uh, the command for uh, training. Yeah, yeah. So I have provided the links on the PPT. So if you just click on the, these links, so. Yeah, you can just click the link and it will take you to the exact page. And we have provided the instructions here. It's on the PPT, like we updated the PPT today. It was pr present on the previous PPT as well. Uh, the, the PowerPoint is on the uh, page. On the page. So if you, look, if you go to the page, you will be able to see uh, like PPT here, the LLM file. Yeah. So going back to the code. Sorry. Okay, uh, I understand. So it's, it's just for like, I'm running it right now, but uh, uh, this this is not very important. We can, we can give time if anyone wants to, wants to run it with us, we can give them some time. Uh, we, we, we can do that like, because well, they don't have access. Yeah, so it's, it's just, I'm submitting a script right now. Uh, I'll go through the code later, which will be zoomed, uh, zoomed in a little bit more. So I just want to show that like, okay, we ran a code right now. So this is an example for running uh, PyTorch with a um, Mistral model. So the code has been submitted. It is currently queued in. And then this is for the ORT code. And by the time we'll complete the presentation, hopefully it will execute. Uh, and now I'm just submitting the job for, sorry, yeah. So now I'm submitting the job for inference session. It will benchmark the runtime for PyTorch uh, eager mode as well as Onyx runtime. Okay, uh, one second. Yeah, ju just a second. Mm. 
I'll go, go through the code later. Like, uh, so just right, right now we have just submitted the runs. So this is the inference session uh, which we submitted. And the first two was uh, training for PyTorch. And this is training using Onyx Runtime. So using Deep Speed Stage 2 as well as Lara. Uh, now we'll get back to the presentation. And yeah, just a second. We will do a walkthrough of this. Good. OK. So uh, starting with the Onyx Runtime. So what is Onyx Runtime? So it's a cross-platform machine learning model accelerator, which has flexible interface to integrate your hardware-specific libraries. It has been, uh, uh, it can be used with various model frameworks, including PyTorch, TensorFlow, TFLight, Scikit-Learn, and many more. You can train your model in Python and deploy it with whatever languages you are using for your use case, for example, c -sharp, Java, JavaScript, and many more. You just, uh, to use Onyx Runtime, you just need to convert your model to Onyx format, and which only requires a few lines of code. This is the link uh, to the page for Onyx Runtime to get more information. To just give you an example, what, what is, uh, like what does the Onyx uh, for, do, Onyx Runtime do? So we are taking a very, very simple example in which we're creating a feed forward network. So we have a X data set, which we are reshaping and taking a dimension out of it and then applying some feed forward network and applying a rail on top of it and applying softmax at the end. So what you get in graph representation would be something what you see on your left. So this is the actual graph representation which we are seeing here. And in this case, uh, uh, we should focus on the, right, you can see my arrow, right? Yeah, okay, great. So we should focus on this part. So in this case, the Onyx would optimize your graph from left to right. And what it has done is uh, it has taken this part of the graph and optimized into a single node by, uh, by using some of the fusions and uh, other things so that your, at your runtime, you are able to execute your code faster. So that is like the crux of the technology. We also integrate some kernels as well to uh, optimize your training runtime as well as inference. Uh, this is just a simple example, but the optimizations which are done can also include like fusing a lot of layers to create into a single uh, uh, layer norm fusion or something like that. So that is uh, what Onyx Runtime does uh, for optimization. So there are two parts to Onyx Runtime. One is uh, doing inference. So Onyx Runtime Inference is a high-performance engine for deploying Onyx model uh, to production. Since it is uh, optimized for both cloud and edge uh, use case, and it, it works seamlessly on Linux, Windows, Mac, mobile, and web. It is written in C++, but it has various APIs uh, um, and like C, Python, C Sharp, and it can be deployed in a variety of environments. It integrates very well with various hardware accelerators, including uh, CUDA on NVIDIA GPUs, OpenVINO on Intel processors, Rockham on AMD GPUs, DirectML on Windows, and many more. So you can use Onyx Runtime Inference on whatever use case you, are, you have. These are some of the results which we have generated uh, for ORT inference case scenario, compared it with uh, Torch Script, uh, Torch uh, Compile, and Onyx Runtime. So the first uh, uh, okay, first few cases which you are seeing here, the the orange is using Torch script, then uh, Torch two is the Torch compile, and finally Onyx runtime. As you can see here, in all the cases we are getting better performance for inference scenario uh, for this uh, uh, models. And some of these models are language models, and some of these models are vision model. And uh, for the last four models where we are comparing. Llama 2 as well as Mistral. What we are comparing here is the orange one is uh, Torch Eager Mode, the uh, yellow one is Torch Compile, and um, the blue one is Onyx Runtime. And the last four models use, uh, uh, yeah, so yeah, these are the comparisons for the Onyx Runtime inference. So the next half of the Onyx Runtime is the Onyx Runtime tra training, which is comparatively newer uh, compared to inference. And it is used to train large models while uh, you, 
you are able to accelerate your training and reduce your compute cost, which is uh, a very important thing nowadays, given the increasing amount of cost for uh, GPUs. And it uses only a few lines of uh, code, uh, and we are going to um, talk about that later. Onyx Runtime Training supports CUDA and ROCOM acceleration, and also uh, it can also be used for on-device training. It is built on uh, hi highly successful and proven technologies of Onyx Runtime and Onyx Format. What the benefits of the Onyx runtime is it provides you with faster training as it optimized kernels and you can get up to 2x speed up for your uh, state-of-the-art models. You are able to train larger models at, as some memory optimizations are applied on your model. And for example, you are able to train uh, GPT-2 on 16 GB, uh, GPU, but it runs out of memory with stock PyTorch. So you are, you are able to efficiently use your uh, GPU memory. And since it is part of PyTorch ecosystem, it doesn't require a lot of setup. It is avail available via Torch ORT Python package, as well as it is also part of the Azure container for PyTorch, which we are going to talk about later. So these are some of the results for Onyx Runtime training. So the first uh, two models, the Llama 2 and Mistral, the, these are generating using deep speed uh, stage two. I'm, I'm going to talk about the deep, stage, uh, deep speed stages uh, very soon. And uh, the last of the models compare PyTorch with uh, Onyx Runtime. And in all the cases you can see, we are seeing good amount of performance improvement uh, for, for all the models which we have here. And again, these are some of the models for uh, language as well as vision. So if there are no more questions, I can start with the uh, deep speed. So deep speed is a open source uh, deep learning optimization software. And uh, what deep speed does is it has different uh, stages of partitioning your optimizer states, gradients, and parameters so that you can efficiently use your GPU memory. So the stage one partitions optimizer states uh, stage two uh, adds gradient partition on top of stage one, and stage three partitions parameters on top of stage two. So it helps you in efficiently utilizing your parameters on, on, on the GPU, uh, so that's what it helps on. And because of partitioning and sh sharing those uh, different stages across your different GPUs, you are able to train uh, large and large models with billions and even trillions of parameters. You are able to achieve excellent system throughput and efficiently scale to thousands of GPUs. And uh, uh, you can also train your models on very resource constrained a GPU system because you are partitioning your uh, parameters across different GPUs. So with deep speed, you can uh, you get uh, really good speed ups and the cost reduces significantly. And a lot of uh, recent large language models are using deep speed uh, different stages to train their uh, model nowadays. So uh, next uh, we are going to talk about LoRa. LoRa stands for low rank adaptation. So it's, it's a slightly newer technique and it is uh, basically a fine tuning technique which you can use on top of your already trained model. It significantly reduces the number of parameters you have uh, for training. You, are, you don't have to train your entire model uh, because that takes a lot of memory. You can use a lower end, uh, you can freeze your bottom half of the model and only retrain a portion of your model uh, to, to make it usable for, the use, uh, for different kind of use cases you have. The benefits of uh, uh, LoRa are you will have faster training because the number of parameters which you're uh, going to use have reduced significantly and which will also lead to lesser memory requirements. You will have similar inference time because essentially you are not changing the number of parameters which you have and the, you, you will also get easier task switching because essentially your base model uh, remains the same but the task which you are using it for um, it can be, you can have different fine-tuned models for those, and the fine-tuned models will only contain the retrained parameters. So the, you, you won't have so many replicas of your model since the models are so huge. Uh, it will help you in reducing the, uh, the model size for the task switching. Uh, yeah, so 
The next thing we are talking, we are going to talk about is the Azure container for PyTorch, which is uh, a container developed by Microsoft for, which is an, it is optimized for large distributed deep learning uh, workloads. It, it is pre-packaged with one of the, with some of the best Microsoft technologies for training acceleration. It is primarily released for uh, training uh, uh, based on the, for PyTorch as well as Onyx Runtime training workloads. So what it provides you is, it, it is an optimized training framework. So you can develop and uh, accelerate your PyTorch models on large workloads. Since we are releasing lots of uh, uh, containers on a regular cadence, you get up-to-date stack with uh, latest compatible versions of Python, PyTorch, CUDA versions, and so on. It is very easy to use since you are uh, you have you are you are taking a already validated environment and which has already been tested on number of workloads. Then uh, the we also do a, lo a lot of training optimization technologies like we talked about Onyx runtime, then ORT mixture of experts, deep speed nebula checkpointing. MSQL, which is for communication, uh, communicating between different GPUs, and so on. So the benefits are uh, you don't have to install these libraries and integrate it with your uh, environment. You, you get everything tested uh, out. And it also supports um, integration with Azure, so you can directly download these images for your use case uh, into Azure and directly use it. I'll sh show you an example of using ACPT into Azure later, but that's what it is. So this is one of the examples. Uh, a lot of cust internal customers, uh, uh, 1P as well as 3P, are using ACPT for their use case. An example where a um, small company, Fashable, used ACPT to train their uh, models across uh, several nodes. and able to efficiently get the results. So this was really helpful for them, and uh, they were having a lot of problems while setting up their environment, and this was uh, one of the achievements for ACPT. And uh, the large language model which we are going to talk about today is the Mistral. So Mistral 7 billion version 0.1 is the model which we are using today, and it is a recent model uh, which is, it's, it's a pre-trained generative text transformer model. And it uses group query attention for faster inference, and it uses sliding window attention for having a more context in your model. Onyx Runtime, this is just an example which we are using today. Onyx Runtime supports a lot more other models, including the Llama 2, 7 billion, 13 billion for training, the Microsoft's Phi model, uh, which is also another large language model. Then there are several vision models, as we saw earlier, like uh, Google's VIT model and, and many more. And then we also have Stable Diffusion Falcon 7 billion model, which is supported. To put this all together, um, and uh, we'll have Shama explain this, uh, all the details here. She will put it much <laughs> in a much better way than me. Yeah, I'll, just, uh, I'll just talk about this slide where uh, right now we've learned about a lot of different technologies. We've learned about Onyx Runtime, we've learned about Deep Speed, then the uh, LoRa ACPT, which is the Docker image that kind of brings all of this together and makes it available easily for developers. Uh, Azure ML takes all this goodness and then it's uh, essentially providing the one-stop solution for you to do both model development, which means it's fine-tuning, as well as inference, which means it's deployment. Uh, so if we start from the bottom, then we have access to hardware, different NVIDIA SKUs. We also support AMD. And uh, uh, once we move a little ahead to access these different SKUs, we can use uh, different forms of training methods, which is uh, through the SDK. We can use CLI. We can use the UI, which is the Azure ML Studio. And then uh, as we move up another level, as I said, the package, the uh, Azure Container for PyTorch that allows you to uh, use something that's already validated, something that's already uh, tested and uh, has been packaged with all the needed technologies so that you can optimize your fine tuning and make sure that it runs fast, uh, your training time is reduced, 
and you can get your fine-tuned results faster and more efficiently. Once you, um, again, when we move another step ahead, we can use, uh, the user code can be, you know, through scripts, their jobs, compute targets, all of those. So it supports a variety of user code. And then, uh, again, it supports a variety of models. So, of course, it supports the traditional models, transformer-based uh, CNNs, RNNs, but then it's, it also supports LLMs, open AI models, as well as the open source LLMs. And uh, once this fine tuning is done, so this entire stack that I just described is for training, it's for fine tuning. And once that is done, you can then use that model to deploy for inference, or you can export it in the Onyx format, and you can take it for deploying it on a mobile device, or you could uh, do, uh, uh, convert it to any other format that makes sense for you. So this is the end-to-end -end kind of model development story that is supported uh, by Azure ML as a solution. Go oh, back to Abhishek. Yeah. So I'll hand it over to Abhishek, who will do the code walkthrough now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, so what I know about is like uh, so they they were trying to uh, I think use it for like uh, training their model and they wanted to tr train they had a larger data set and they had a larger model but they were not able to parallelize it across various nodes so they used uh, instead of setting up their own environment and figuring out all the issues they used ACPT image, which contains like uh, the latest version of PyTorch, the CUDA version which we want to use, and other packages. So, and if there are some packages which you uh, you want to use but are not installed, you can install on top of that. And once you have the setup uh, there in Azure ML or any other place you want to use it, you can train it on uh, multiple nodes, and that's how I believe uh, they use the ACPT environment. So yeah, like it's for their use case. I I, I think like uh, yeah, like uh, I'm not sure like what was their exact use case, but yeah, it could be like you can have a vision model, you can have a language model, you can have a multi-model model. So that's depends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so these containers they're connected with Infinity Band, or they yes. Are yeah, they are connected with Infinity Band. Yeah. Azure. Uh, I'll talk about that. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. So. Okay. So uh, let me start with the code walkthrough. Now, what we did today uh, in the starting. So I'll start with the Onyx runtime training uh, job first. So if you just open your browser and search for Onyx runtime training examples and go to the Onyx Runtime Training Examples repository and go to the... Okay, yeah. So if, if you guys want to follow, follow along, like I, I, I can go through this slowly. So just Google for Onyx Runtime Training Examples and then Select the first repository which comes, the Onyx Runtime Training Examples. And in this, we have added a Mistral Fine Tune Code uh, folder here. And I'll just go through the README file uh, and it it explains whatever I did earlier. So how do you set up your uh, Azure ML account and uh, have the required workspace to run your job? So for this case today, we are using Azure Container for PyTorch, which has uh, all the isolators and uh, technologies which we talked about. And then uh, we are using the Mistral 7B uh, model for uh, for this. Then 
for setting up Azure ML, you need to uh, set up your account uh, on Azure ML. And once you have the account set up, you need to do easy CLI login uh, to ensure that you're connected to the cloud. And then you will need to get a JSON file which contains the environment you are using, what workspace you are using, what kind of GPUs it has. It's a small JSON file which, is, uh, which you need to have to run this code. Uh, there, there is another way to run this code, which would be directly if you have some some uh, machine on your own. I have provided that below. I'll go through that later. Uh, you can directly uh, run this command as well. So uh, that's what you need for this uh, case. And uh, whatever uh, whatever JSON file you have, you need to rename that file to wsconfig.json. And once you have done that, you can run the demo, which I did in the starting, by just submitting Python AML submit.py file, and that will start the job. Uh, this, this job builds on top of the training environment which we use. So let me quickly go through the environment which we are using today. So this is the Docker file uh, which we have for today. And as you can see, we are using the ACPT uh, image. It has Ubuntu 20.04, 20, 20 CUDA 11.8, Python 3.1, in Torch 2.1.1, which is uh, the latest release for Torch. So for since uh, it already comes with Onyx Runtime training, but our Lava model required a nightly version of uh, Onyx Runtime, I had to uninstall Onyx Runtime training and install the nightly version and uh, configure the Onyx Runtime training. We'll be releasing Onyx Runtime uh, training 1.17.0 soon in uh, January, which will have already all the optimizations for uh, for Llama and uh, Mistral models. Uh, then what it is doing is it's uh, it's using a requirements txt file because we want we don't want our images to be like contain everything because that will become too bloated and it would uh, become slow for every use uh, for every use case. So we want to keep at least the important packages which we have and add whatever you want on top of it. So for example, in this case, we are doing uh, adding this requirements or txt file. So here we are installing some of the evaluate packages then Azure ML core, which is required for integration with Azure ML, and then using uh, other packages like uh, data sets, transformers, uh, optimum, and so on. So these, uh, these versions are uh, installed on top of this uh, ACPT image. So that's how we are creating this environment. So as you can see here, like uh, using the image and installing on top of that, like you just need to play around uh, with whatever use case you have, and it doesn't take much time to figure out um, and the, the pa package requirement. Since you already have the most important things like the CUDA version, Python version, the Torch version, and uh, other things already set up for you. So you can use them very easily. So once you have the environment set up, uh, what you need to do is you just, like once you uh, submit this command, python a uh, aml submit.py, it will generate the two URLs which we uh, looked at earlier and it, uh, it generated these two commands. So these have already completed. Uh, so I'll, I'll go through them later during the uh, inference, uh, uh, during the performance comparison uh, stage. If you don't have an Azure ML account or you already logged into your compute, you can use um, the other way, which is directly running the code on the machine each you have. Uh, so you just need to go to this uh, folder called fine tune CLM, which is this one, and it just have two scripts. One is run CLM.py, and another is zero stage two. So zero stage two is basically the deep speed zero stage two configuration, which contains like what kind of stage you want to set up for your optimization and a few more parameters uh, to optimize your use case. And I'll go through the uh, run clm.py file now. Uh, so yeah, sorry, and this one is uh, still left. So to run the PyTorch model, you just need to uh, run this case. So it just, it is mentioning that you are using eight GPUs, uh, you are using the script, and you, are, you have specified the model name Mistral 7B version 0.1. 
then the, what is the data set name you are using, uh, the training batch size, and so on, some other parameters which you need to specify. For running o, uh, ORT, you need to export a few couple of uh, environment variables. So apply ORT would ensure that the Onyx runtime is applied. And there is another um, environment variable which, uh, which you can set as ORT module fallback policy. So once you disable the fallback uh, uh, for ORT module, it felt like the feature, the default feature is uh, if you are not able to convert your module into Onyx runtime because of any reason or because of any import error, it will fall back to PyTorch and your code will uh, run normally as it should on PyTorch. With, you might not get the optimization uh, benefits, but uh, your code will still run. But once you enable this uh, case, either it will run on Onyx runtime or it will fail. So for this case, we wanted to ensure that it runs on Onyx runtime, uh, so that's why we have uh, uh, disabled the fallback. And the command uh, remains the same for this case as well. So let me quickly go through the uh, run runclm.py file, which is the crux uh, of all the code here. So uh, this is a script taken from Hugging Face uh, Transformers library, and it has, there are very, very small number of changes which you need to do. Uh, to ensure it uh, it works well with Onyx runtime. So what you need to add here is a couple of things. You need to add the apply ORT environment uh, variable flag, and you will need to change the parser which you have. So that's the one change you need to do. So instead of using the default training arguments uh, parser, uh, you will need to pass it ORT training arguments flag. The other thing which you need to do is, uh, is change the trainer which you have. By default, you are using the Transformers trainer, uh, trainer but if you, are use, you want to use Onyx Runtime, you will use ORT trainer, and that's the only change it's needed. So you can see it's just like less than 10 lines of code which you need to uh, add to your code base, and you can get benefits of more than 10% of uh, throughput uh, improvement for uh, compared to PyTorch. The other thing uh, which I talked about today was LoRa. So this is the code which has been added for LoRa. So without this, your uh, default entire model will be fine-tuned. And in LoRa, you need to, uh, so uh, we are using the PEF package from Transformers, and you need to specify the target module. So these are the modules which will be uh, fine-tuned. Since the entire model is not fine-tuned and you are only specifying these, uh, these modules uh, which are fine-tuned, you essentially your model size has decreased significantly. So that's mostly the crux of uh, what we are doing here. And uh, uh, yeah, so if there are any questions on the training side, uh, please go ahead. Otherwise, we'll switch to the inference code example. Okay, so let's go to the Onyx runtime inference. So uh, let's uh, uh, go to Onyx runtime inference examples repository. Uh, you can search for that and select the first option. In this, you need to go to the Python folder, and in this, go to models folder, and today we are looking for Mistral, so we'll look at the Mistral folder here. I have provided like the similar details for uh, uh, benchmarking compared to Torch, uh, Eager as well as Torch compile here. The setup process is similar as I went through for the, for, uh, for the training job. And uh, instead of uh, like what we are going to run here is the AML submit uh, Mistral inference uh, dot Python file, and it will generate a single uh, URL which will contain the complete output for uh, PyTorch as well as Onyx runtime. And if you want to directly run this on your uh, compute, you can uh, just go to this folder and run this uh, bash script uh, in this repository. So the environment code for this case looks pretty similar. It has lesser requirements. So we are just installing the nightly version of uh, PyTorch because we want to use the latest version. 
and then instead of using the Onyx runtime training, we are installing the ORT nightly uh, GPU, and then we are using the transformers and um, optimum and one more package, that's it. That's the only change we need to do here. And then uh, the inference code looks something like this. It's uh, basically cloning the Onyx runtime repository uh, and then uh, running. Uh, so, so here I want to point this out, like uh, there are two more steps you need to do before you can run your uh, Onyx runtime code because your first step would be converting your model to Onyx format. So whatever PyTorch or any other model you have, you need to convert it into Onyx format. And once you have converted it into Onyx format, you want to optimize uh, that model. So in the next step, we are optimize that uh, model. So some of the, like one example of, of optimization which we saw in the, in the starting of the session. So this is the step uh, which is there to run the optimization on the Onyx model. And finally, you can run uh, your benchmarking for uh, Onyx runtime. So this step runs for uh, using Onyx runtime. Then this is for Torch eager mode. And here you can specify uh, what kind of uh, benchmark you want to do. If you want to use PyTorch eager, if you want to use something else, and you can also specify if uh, a different batch size you want to use, or if you want to use different kind of sequence length. And uh, finally, uh, this is another you can use for Torch compile. I have disabled this for today's uh, session because it takes like uh, uh, 30 minutes approximately to run this one. The reason for that is like for each uh, batch size and sequence length, the model is recompiled and uh, that's why it takes longer to uh, run the entire model, to run the benchmarks, but benchmarking script. But essentially what you will get at the end is I have, I have all the numbers which I have generated earlier. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, that one later. But uh, it, it works fine uh, otherwise. So you can uh, take a look at your own time later. So I can quickly go through the benchmarking script now, I think, yeah, this would be the. One second. Yeah. So for the case of um, uh, you, when you have enabled ORT convert to Onyx, you will be, um, starting an ORT session, and that will be used for, for, for this case. And if you're running ORT, you will be running like, uh, yeah, the run ORT inference uh, uh, function here, and it essentially prepares all the inputs for, for your use case. So the difference between PyTorch and ORT is PyTorch uses torch tensors as, it, as its input data, whereas ORT uses, uh, uh, NumPy or IO bindings for, uh, for, for, the, uh, for its input data. So that's the difference which we are doing here. So it's creating output with uh, the input with uh, IO bindings and uh, finally running the same code for, uh, for evaluation. Uh, so that's the same code which we run for uh, hugging fa uh, for using PyTorch as well as for ORT. And then finally, I, um, so if yeah, so that's that's pretty much which we are doing on uh, for the inference side. If you have uh, like like I have provided links to all the code which we have here, you can go through the code on your own time. But if you have if you have any questions, please let me know now. No, oh, so the, it says CUDA visible devices, so it's saying that only use GPU zero for inference. So that's what it is saying. So uh, for training, what we used was, we used eight uh, uh, V100 GPUs for this use case, and for inference, we used a single GPU on V100. So we have 32 GB, uh, GPUs which we are using here, and that's what we are doing. Uh, so let me show you the runs which we did today. Uh, so. What we are doing here today is like the first is the Mistral 7 billion PyTorch causal language model using LoRa plus DeepSpeed stage two. So we submitted this job at 4.13 and uh, like it took like seven minutes for code allocation and the entire code ran for 16 minutes. And if we look at the output of our logs, 
this is what we are going to see here. So it's printing the iterations per, per second which we are observing during this runtime. So we are seeing approximately like 1.52 uh, iterations per second uh, for uh, for the training job. And as I mentioned uh, um, before, it's using eight V100 32 GB uh, GPUs uh, for training the model. And similarly, if we look at for Onyx Runtime, which is also uh, doing causal language model plus Deep Speed Stage 2 and LoRa, uh, it Overall, it took 17 minutes, but I'll go through that uh, later. Like for PyTorch, it took 16 minutes, uh, and for ORT, it took 17 minutes, but I'll go through uh, this, the increase of time for Onyx Runtime uh, in a minute. But what you see here is the iterations per second which you're getting is 1.76. So you are getting, the throughput has increased from 1.52 to 1.76. That's approximately a 14% improvement of uh, the in performance. So these are the numbers which this uh, we have computed before. So the Onyx runtime is, uh, we have seen is 1.79 iterations per second. And for PyTorch, we have seen 1.54 iterations per second. And it's like, yeah, it's approximately 16% uh, throughput increment with while using Onyx runtime. So the number of uh, iterations which we ran today were only 500, and that is mostly not enough for, for the fine tuning case. So when you, uh, when you use it for longer time, you will see more improvement in the uh, overall runtime. And if we benchmark it on A100 using two GPUs, we are seeing a similar increase in throughput change. The, the three, on PyTorch, uh, we are getting 3.09 iterations per second, but with ORT training, we are getting 3.59. So the reason why we saw a higher runtime for Onyx runtime is it ORT has uh, overhead because you need to uh, ch uh, convert your model from PyTorch to the Onyx runtime and then do some optimizations on top of it, which takes some time, but it's just a one-time cost. It's not a, on a recurring basis. So since the overhead is not significant for the training time, you will soon see your uh, so, so, soon see the benefits of higher throughput. For example, I ran uh, the same code with 10,000 iterations, and you can do this on your own. Uh, on PyTorch, it took uh, the entire training, it took 6,600 seconds approximately. And with ORT training, it took 5,750 uh, seconds uh, tra training time. And these are less than two, two hours of uh, training on V100. So uh, like for a lot of use cases which we have today, the training is much longer than that. And for this case itself, we were able to see a realized performance gain, like the time gain of 12.5%. So if you are running it longer, you will see even better um, better throughput uh, improvements, closer to 16% with while comparing the overall time. So that's uh, the takeaway for the uh, on the training side. Then for Inferencing. So these, let me go through the run which we did today. Okay, hopefully this one has finished. Okay, great. So we started the run at 4.15 and uh, it, it took like nine minutes to submit and finally the output took approximately 28 minutes to complete. So the two steps which uh, took uh, longest time in this one was uh, converting your model to uh, Onyx runtime and then optimizing the graph. So that takes about 15 to 20 minutes. And then the scripts uh, take for eager mode as well as for Onyx runtime takes approximately three, four minutes each. So let me go through like, it's a lot of <laughs> numbers here, but I, I can tell you what it is printing. So what we ran here today was for a batch size of one and two, and we use sequence lengths from 32 to 512. So what it is printing is, uh, it's printing for batch size one and sequence length 32. It's printing what is the latency to step to get past key values. So in LLMs there are, uh, like for Mistral model, there are two things which you need to do. One is the prompt, gener uh, prompt processing time and the another is the token generation time. So prompt is to like whatever information which you have, you need to create uh, uh, key values on, uh, for, for, for that, uh, for that sequence and the token generation is basically generating the next token based on the whatever input which you have. So that's what you uh, do here. So the first step is it took 0 0.0248 seconds to process the prompt and 
uh, it took 0 0.030 seconds to generate the next token for batch size one and sequence length 32. So these are the results for Onyx runtime. And uh, you will notice that the token generation time is mostly constant, uh, but the prompt generation time increases significantly as you go for higher sequence length. Uh, so from, let's see, let's compare one case, for example. So the starting with, we started like 24 uh, milliseconds for prompt generation for sequence length 32. And if we go to, let's say 512, it increased to 99 milliseconds. So the prompt generation time has increased. But if you see like uh, the token generation time is mostly constant here, like it was 30 milliseconds before and now it just increased to 32 seconds, 32 milliseconds. And below there are the results for, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for torch trigger mode. So uh, you can see the numbers here uh, for V100, but I'll summarize the results which I have already computed into a table. So these are the numbers which we have seen on A100 single GPU. So we have summarized the numbers from batch uh, size one from sequence length 16 to 2047 for batch size one and two. So there are four columns here. The first column represents the prompt uh, uh, processing time improvement compared to eager mode. The second column represents prompt uh, processing time improvement compared to compile mode. And the third represents token uh, generation time improvement compared to eager mode and last compared to compile mode. So these are the four columns uh, which we are looking at. Overall, what you can see here is the Onyx runtime is doing in, uh, better in all the cases. Uh, that is one of the uh, things to take away. The other thing is to note is when you go for higher sequence lengths, PyTorch uh, runs out of memory, so you are not even able to process the data set which you have. A100 has 80 GB of uh, GPU memory, uh, but uh, if you go for like V100 GPUs, it will, PyTorch will run out of memory even sooner, but it works fine with, uh, with Onyx runtime. So if you want to use higher sequence length, it, it definitely using PyTorch is uh, not going to be worth it. And you can see we, we are seeing a, a good amount of improvement, even for like uh, Torch compile, which is faster than Torch eager mode, we are seeing more than like 40% improvement for, for lots of cases. And uh, yeah, so uh, you, can, you can get these improvements by just switching to Onyx runtime, which requires a few lines of code change. Are there any questions on this, on the results? I think so, it can be dynamic, yeah. Like, uh, but we are just benchmarking the numbers here. So, so let's say if you uh, uh, ran a sequence length of 2047 uh, 10 times, what's the average runtime? So what, what we are doing here is we just want to understand like how much is uh, the performance comparison for different sequence length, but yeah, it, it can definitely be dynamic. Another thing to I wanted to mention here was like we for both ORT and Torch we do some kind of warm ups so that the initial loading time is removed. So we do some uh, warm up uh, run case scenarios and then we run the actual benchmarking uh, numbers. So yeah, but uh, to answer your question, yeah, we we can do we we can have dynamic sequence lens. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, so as, as you go to higher uh, batch sizes, like you are still seeing performance compared to PyTorch, but I haven't uh, like I don't have all the numbers right now, uh, but we still see see some improve uh, improvement. And I think we uh, Sangun, uh, like if you know about the answer for continuous batching, uh, I'm not. Uh, 
Thanks, Egun. Uh, okay. So, if there are no more questions, uh, I'm going to summarize what we talked about today. So, we started with uh, different technologies which can help you in improving your uh, training as well as inference scenarios by getting better throughputs as well as uh, getting uh, reducing your compute usage. We also went through what kind of environments we provide and how it can benefit you in providing an easier setup and more efficient uh, use case for your GPUs and how it easily integrates with Azure ML. We also went through an example for LLM fine tuning for Mistral model and inferencing. And uh, now Sankhun will go through a UI walkthrough for uh, for, for using a model catalog. Uh, hey. He needs to really hurry. Hey. Uh, can you enable the the other speaker? No. Oh, okay. This is working. So. Yeah. So object to show you them actually the. You know, the, for training inference, we need some, like, to set up the script, write the script, and then also, like, the, you know, the write some, like, the configuration for the DISPID or the, you know, the HPT. But the AML actually provides a pretty simple way to the fine tune the model. So, what you need actually to provide some, your own data set, and then model link, that's it. So, I'm gonna show some simple demo. So, if you go to the ml.azure.com, you can see the model catalog here. So basically, AML actually the, uh, provide the lots of the models from like the, uh, the OpenAI, Meta, or Hugging Face, and like the, the Mistral. So this one actually, the, 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 the Agile team actually lots of the, the comprehensive the evaluation to find some right the training parameters. And the all parameters are predefined in each, uh, in each UI. So let, let's pick up the Mistral model here. So basically, it provides evaluate the fine tune deploy option here. So you can go to the fine tune, then select your data set. Let's uh, one twin. Okay, no loading. Next. Then it analyzed the, the your data set. Basically, this one, this all the UI is predefined for the every models in, in the AML. So simply you can map the, the field you want to train here, then go next. That's it. Actually, you can select your the compute instance and then start the training. But if you want more like the fine tuning on the training parameter, you can go to advanced setting. And then it will show some training parameters like the enable LoRa, disable LoRa, and LoRa parameters. Also, even the enabled OLT or the tip speed, this kind of things. So, yeah. But uh, if we want actually the predefined the training parameters, we can simply. Okay. 
cancel everything. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Actually, the select data and then uh, click the start. That's it. Yeah, that was the uh, last uh, yeah, part of the presentation. Thank you, everyone. Uh, any any questions or uh, and uh, I will be here to answer any of your questions now. And it would be great if you can provide feedback on the below link. Thank you. So the quantization is uh, one time step, but I'm not sure if we can use uh, to. So for training, he's saying like if you want to convert a model to uh, like int eight or int four, is there a faster way to do it using GPU or something else? And uh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. For, for the case we were running today, like the Mistral model took, uh, for inference, it took it takes approximately 10 minutes to convert from Onyx format to optimized and quantized format. That's, uh, and I was running it on Indy 40 machine, which has 40 um, CPU cores. But,
Yeah, our, our repository is pretty active. Like, if you're having any issues on Onyx Runtime or anything, like, feel free to uh, report it. Like, uh, we take a look at it. Uh, yeah, on regular case. Yeah. Um, is there a minimum, like, CUDA version that you need when you're using, like, the Onyx Runtime, for instance, or something that's a fairly, like, recent CPU? Uh, like, we, we support, like, at least till CUDA 11.3. Uh, like some of the newer features might not be available, I think. If you actually do you know, the compile, the, the build from, from, from the source, then maybe we support. But the, we shouldn't actually need, definitely we duplicate the old project for that support. So now I think the, we, we support basically 11.7, 8, and then 12 for two. Yeah. Yeah. I'm stuck with like a Tesla C4, which is running CUDA version 11. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, like I think uh, as Sangun mentioned, you'll, you'll need to build Onyx Runtime from source, so that might help. Okay, with the specific okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you, everyone.